So this is the Jan van Eyck Academy's vlog, day number two. So I was thinking about the last time I was a practicing artist and in this world. And it's when I went to South Korea in Gwangju. And that experience was actually really alienating. It was the last time I was a practicing Muslim, which is about 2011. And just how the world just isn't accommodating for practicing Muslims, the art world. I mean, just to take the example, today is remembering Srebrenica Day, the Bosnian genocide, which marked my youth and my identity and the worst atrocity in Europe uh, since World War II. The genocide which still inspires masculines today, like the Andres Breivik uh, Christchurch massacre. And I asked this institution, will you do something to like commemorate in any way? Nothing. Um, there's a lot of institutional pressure on cultural institutions within the Netherlands to mark something to do with Black Lives Matter. Um, I find, whilst I'm sympathetic towards anything which brings police accountability to account, uh, I'm also wary of like American hegemony and Anglophone hegemony and my own privileges with using the English language. I do not know how to say any word in uh, Dutch apart from the apple, meaning the apple, which my friend Hannah, who is British Jamaican, taught me. And when I'd say to Dutch people, can you show me Dutch food, they'll just actually laugh at me. But going back to the original topic, I was thinking, I mean, half art world power just involves getting drunk with the right people, going to the right private views. I mean, the only type of art world of Muslim who succeeds is like the sort of Zizeki hipster paying from uh, Slavs and Tatars type person who essentially has no form of practice, uh, no form of uh, knowledge that's not just titillating, you know, so he's not gonna like Al Ghazali or someone actually worthy of reading um, and people have a certain level of contempt sort of the Ian Hersey Ali type person right someone like Leila Abu Leia or Samaya Manzu Khan you get nothing like that within the art world I think everyone else now on Saturday they're getting drunk they're posting pictures of like gin they drink and stuff like that I'm just it's so alienating for me I, I gave up um alcohol I had some uh, after a very painful breakup uh, with a pious Muslim woman that I was getting yeah, engaged with just went a bit off the rails and just didn't give a fuck and hated myself so just anything any shit would like <sighs> numb the pain um, and then the editor of my book Nina Power Show Radicals he's some cousinly person on Rata, uh made a few stupid mistakes yes but uh, no she's a uh, Jeremy Corbyn loving person who financially supports Muslim prisoners, like I know this woman, she does say a few stupid things and she'd admit that so. Anyway, she uh, had a hidden alcohol addiction that I never knew about and used to drink herself to comatose. And I always thought, because you know like left wing vloggers are generally losers. I mean even the ones who are like quite successful, like Mark Fisher was only successful till the last few years of his life, but was generally a bit of a left wing loser. Uh, living in Kent, uh, I, I, I curated him at Tate Britain in 2009, I didn't even have any money, or, that was generous and kind of him, but um, obviously he wasn't doing that well financially, anyway, she, she, so that was the main reason I actually gave up, and she gave up last year, um, and I feel a lot happier, um, I also put on loads of weight, it's became really fat, because it sort of affected how something your metabolism, um, but art or power is so connected to drinking, like art institutions that I worked at within Britain, they never even have one, just one non-alcoholic drink apart from tap water. Um, and it was the same in Slovenia, like I was at the Ule Foundation and my choice was drinking like white wine and whatever. I, and I don't want to like sell out or assimilate to what I view as a, to be honest, a decadent culture. I've seen the way white men behave when they drink alcohol and it's pretty nasty they just behave like sleazy animals uh, i remember these art tutors probably approaching middle-aged and they all got drunk and the way they 
talked about their female students, about fucking them in the toilets and Tinder. It was so revolting and disgusting. I just thought that put me off life. Plus, British drinking culture is pretty disgusting, right? Like, you either vomit from the tube on the weekend. It's not something I imitate or view as a higher civilization. So I'm going to find myself alienated again because I don't wish to drink alcohol. Um, I'm making this video because I know there's someone out there who's had this experience. I remember this period when I was quite anti-Muslim, when I was heartbroken. Not properly anti-Muslim, more like emo, emo anti-Muslim. Like, oh, the hijabi heartbreaker or the Arab girl who made me feel like shit or dumped me with an email and then said, oh, but I'm going to say your name in my door. I was like, that emo type thing, right? Um, I remember seeing my friend Zara from Pakistan just sitting on her own, just not drinking in this PhD geography thing. And I felt such a sense of empathy with her, just seeing her sit on her own. I knew how that felt. So I didn't drink too, to be in solidarity with her. Uh, now I, I feel happier just giving things up. I, I don't wish to return to it again. Um, I admit, admit, honestly, I did these things which just to assimilate and fit in. But it's not that, it's one shy pride. Like, people drink to be extroverted and because of extrovert supremacy and um, because they feel they have to be a certain way, but just accept some people communicate differently. And that includes me. Um, accept there's different types of sensibility. Um, and you don't have to be all brash, like in your face people to be like the, the, the soul. I mean, there's usually not much soul in the type of like small talk crap that uh, talks, but when I was in Korea, it just made me really lonely and alienated because um, I just didn't want to drink alcohol. Um, so here I am alone in my studio. <laughs> um, my friend from Nigeria has come in who's actually uh, practicing Muslim in praise five times a day, which is so rare in the art world. And he's from Nigeria and really into Premiership football, so uh, that will make me feel less alone. I don't feel that alone, I mean, like, I relate to people, we have the same sensibility, we're all interested in art, we're all aspiring to be artists, 